Everything we've developed for our cars, the batteries, power electronics, uh, the advanced motors, gearboxes, the, the software, the, uh, the AI inference computer, it all actually applies to a humanoid robot. It's the same techniques. It's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. And uh, we've made a lot of progress with uh, Optimus. And uh, as you can see, we, we started up with someone um, in a robot suit, uh, sort of down. And then we've progressed tr dramatically year after year. So if you extrapolate this, you're really going to have something spectacular, something that anyone could own. Um, so you could have your own personal R2-D2 C-3PO. And I think at scale, the, the, you know, this would cost something like, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Probably less, less than a car is my prediction, long term. Now, you know, it'll take us a minute to get to the long term, but, um, but fundamentally at scale, the Optimus robot, you should be able to, to buy an Optimus robot for, I think, probably twenty to $30,000 long term. So, and, and, and what can it do? It can, it'll be able to do anything you want. So it can um, be a teacher, babysit your kids, it can walk your dog, mow your lawn, get the groceries, just be your friend, serve drinks. Um, Whatever you can think of, it will do. And yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I, I, I think this will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Yeah. Technology, you're going to start to hear more about uh, uh, robotics and quantum computing. Quantum computing is going to come forward at a high level, and it's going to be mixed with this artificial intelligence. They're going to be able to go forward and do things. You're going to see that happen, and all these things that begin to take place. You are an authority on AI and prophecy. How is the rise of AI, just technology in general, a major prophetic sign? What we're seeing today, I believe, is a spirit of Antichrist trying to usher in this technology to get us conditioned, used to it, to get the population used to it. You know, I have a thought about this, Eric. When you talk about AI, I think there's two schools of thought on it. One, I believe that many people are saying, my goodness, this stuff's running away with itself. They can't even stop it. But the other side is, I believe there are nefarious characters that are holding the reins on this mm -hmm. so they can aim it for themselves and they can cause people to go in whatever direction they want out of fear, control. But I believe the factor is this, that if the church rises up, we can slow some of these things down. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we cannot stop it, mm -hmm. but we can slow it down. And I believe that's why we got to get involved. That's why we got to have these conversations. Because AI, if we let it run away, we've already seen people interview it, for example, where it comes back and says, I'm a Nephilim, I'm a demon, yes. I'm this. Children interviewing it. Mm. Or you see other scenarios where uh, as soon as they let AI talk to itself, it begins to cut out the developers and it begins to run away with its own code saying, don't delete us, don't delete us, and they got to hunt it down. Could it be that there's demonic nefarious forces that somehow want to get into that technology and begin to speak through it and begin to manipulate the culture? I believe that's where we're going. But again, I think we can stop it. Joseph, these are the times we are living in and you have been great at kind of issuing clarion calls for the church in these times. Uh, in terms of America and where this thing is going in November 2024, yep. uh, what's your sense on the road we're on right now? This outcome of where we're headed is in the hands of the church. I like to say it this way, Eric. You know, I believe in our generation, you can't stop Bible prophecy. It's going to happen. But I think we can cancel the apocalypse for our generation just for a while. I think we can hold it off. But it may come cascading at us. Of course, when I was with Rick over in Turkey and we were standing at the site of Noah's Ark, the Lord gave me a word that we were going into four years of redemptive instability. That means all the things that we're seeing are God responding in a sense to all the cries of people saying, Lord, help us. What are we gonna do as a nation? What about the children? How are we gonna stand up under this? And I believe instability is coming, but much like when it rained when Elijah prayed for it, Ahab started to take the chariot towards the city and Elijah outran him to those That's city good. gates. And I believe that we as the body of Christ will outrun our enemies 
in that rain. And I believe that rain's coming and it'll be instable, instability, but we're gonna have redemption in it. You were talking about because of lawlessness increasing, the hearts of many will grow cold. That's and right. if the hearts of many are growing cold, we have to shake them, we have to wake them with preaching the gospel, but also those clarion calls that say, hey, your house is on fire. Now you can watch it burn, or we could maybe put out the fire and go one more round to another day. We can expect more intensity with Israel's enemies gathering yes. in these days. You know, messing with the apple of God's eye is never a good idea yeah. for any enemy who would stand up against it. You know, I had a, had a prophetic moment come to me, Eric, and it was last year, September 23rd, or September 16th of 2023, and I, I woke up to a, a prayer where I saw Israel marching against their enemies three weeks before it happened. And so I began to really get involved in the spirit with it because I knew these times are coming, I believe there'll be more intense times for Israel, more challenges. But I'm telling you, we're on the winning side of this thing. And uh, what Pastor Troy just broke down, honestly, I think was a clarion call for people to support and stand with yes. that nation. We recently had two hurricanes come into this land. The first one, uh, about eight days previous to that, I think it was on the 18th of September, I was writing on my whiteboard and the Lord said, draw a picture of America. I did draw a picture here above Florida, circle this area, write the word a surge, write the word Florida after you write that word. And I began to do that. And suddenly when that hurricane came in, that is exactly the area that it hit. And then the second one coming in, going after Florida, the Lord began to minister something to me. And I saw the intensity and the intent of the enemy to destroy. When I was praying through this, the Lord began to show me that this hurricane that was coming to Florida was going to be monumental and destructive. And there was many parts of it that certainly were. And I'm not downplaying how damaging it was. But in the middle of the night last night, many people like y'all, like us, other ones, other prophets I know stood up and began to curse that thing and pray against it. There was a supernatural wave across this land. I don't know if you know that, but there was a supernatural wave across this land and a number of things happened. They said the eye got gouged out or punched out and suddenly there was no more eye to the hurricane. Then a wall collapsed with it. A number of things took place and an opening took place. And suddenly it just did not do what it was projected to do. Even though it caused catastrophe, it did a lot of things. And the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me and say, so shall it be with the United States. And I know for a fact, for a fact, in 2015, the Lord sent me to Trump Tower. I was standing in Trump Tower, and as I was there, the Lord began to speak to me, minister to me, and I said, God, is America over with? Is America done? Is America going down? And I was asking him just before that, Lord, have you sent me here so I know who the next president is going to be in 2016? And the Lord said, no, I've not graced you to know that. Heather's with me. We're standing there. He said, I've not graced you to know that. And I kid you not. He said to me, but I have told Lance Wall now. So I'm standing in this place, and I said, Lord, is America going to go down? Is America over with? And the Lord spoke to me and said, no, America has one more round because the young lions are coming. Now, I got to tell you what happened in the Carolinas, what has happened in this nation, what has tried to assault this land. I believe that they're trying to bring a sister's hurricane next. It's like the twin sisters thing, and I'm binding it so it doesn't even get any energy. But I strongly believe something shifted last night in this nation. I keep hearing the word of the Lord say, I'm going to do a thing in your days, though you would not believe it. You would not believe it if someone told it to you. Wow. Amos chapter three, verse seven, it says this, the Lord does nothing yep. unless he first reveals, yep. what, it what does it say? His, his secret to his servants, the prophets. Now, many people say the Lord does nothing unless he tells his prophets. That's not true. A lot of people sing for a rock band called Twisted Scripture. They're not going to teach truth. No, right? Now listen. The Lord does nothing unless he first reveals his what? Say it again. His what? His secret 
to his servants, the prophets. That means this, you may not perfectly know exactly what's going to happen. You may not have the exact interpretation. You may not know the time, the date, the moment, every detail to it, but you do know the secret. And God is saying for those that have ears to hear and eyes to see and you're clear minded and you're not caught up in every delusional thing that's going on in the world right now, but you're staying on point, you're in the word of God, you're praying in the spirit, you will begin to know what the Lord is going to do next. And what God is going to do next is save America. He's going to save America. And you say, my goodness, it doesn't look very good. Well, let me first of all say this. America, in many ways, is not worth saving in some areas. But let me also pull the veil back on another thought. Part of America is absolutely putting filth and trash in front of this generation. But make no mistake, that is a small percentage of this population. And that's the problem. So many people think, no, America's filthy. They're exporting this. They're doing that. Look at all the slime. They're mutilating children. They're doing this. Yes, there's a lot of that in the public eye. But the bulk of America is not that stupidity. The bulk of America is not that type of spirit. The bulk of America is good people wanting good results and saying, where is the answers for our generation? And the problem is, there's a lot of them that are so silent, they want to be left alone, they don't want to be messed with. They just want to continue working hard, loving their children, and seeing this nation continue on. But I believe that they are going to push, and this is the darkness I'm talking about, I believe they're going to push and push and push until people that want to be left alone get involved. I believe that just happened with the Carolinas. I was talking to an analyst friend of mine, Larry, and I said, man, the Carolinas, nobody knows what a swing state that is and how close it is to being an electoral scenario where we lose the whole thing based on that area getting destroyed. Just on that area getting destroyed alone. And I was talking to an analyst and people that know a lot of people in that area, and we know people in that area. And my heart is just so broken over what happened there. But the response of this government to that setting has created a rage in Appalachia and all across the nation. I'm telling you, that's not going to go to the side. There's a lot that's going to come out about that. So I have a sense in my spirit tonight. I'm trying to get through it because I'm being obedient to the Holy Ghost. And the Lord wants to begin to touch many of your lives. There is some strength going. The Lord does nothing unless he first reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. His secret, his secret. I heard the words a couple weeks ago. I heard these words. I wrote it on the whiteboard. But in 25, we're going to kick the hive. You better get ready, man. People are like, oh, Jesus, save America. And the Lord's like, I'm about to. And many people might not like how this goes. Because justice is coming. And America, left to its own devices, is not worth saving. But there's this problem. There's this entity, this people, called the ecclesia that dwells in America. And the last time I read Matthew 16, the gates of hell cannot overcome the ecclesia. And that means that when the devil stands up or if the Antichrist wants to come marching over, he's going to go limping back because the ecclesia is here. And God's bringing an awakening. But this awakening is going to be within the ecclesia. Darkness will get darker, but the light will get brighter. And it will be darkness in Egypt, and it will be light in Goshen. But the light always outshines the darkness, and it will outlast it as well. Now, i got to tell you, we're coming into some wild times. No matter what happens this fall time, it's going to be like 90 days of madness. A lot of people are saying, are we even going to have an election? Are we going to have this? Are we going to have that? The answer is, I don't know. But what I do know is what I sense. The Lord took me on a journey. Now, please, you got to hear this. This is important. 
a number of years ago, I did not want to get into the prophetic. I didn't want to go down all these avenues, seeing things about people, knowing the future, giving people the thousand yard prophetic stare. I don't want to do that. <laughs> what are you looking at? Storm. Storm's coming. Or my, one of my favorites, it's not bad, it's worse. <laughs> I want to be that way. Praise God. Some This prophetic stuff's got the rake anointing. You know what that is, right? You ever walk in the garden and step on a claw rake? <laughs> rake anointing. <laughs> right? No? That's the rake anointing. You get an encounter that you don't want. <laughs> But some people love it. They're addicted to it. They're like, give me another. <laughs> they just keep going. Another rake, another rake, another rake. The rake anointing. A lot of people function that way. I didn't want to be a part of all that stuff. And, and I believe that the Lord is saying, I want a better quality of this. Because both the church and the world deserve to see something. You know what they deserve to see? The church and the world. They deserve to see something. They deserve to see mature believers. Yes, man. We're in the time of a great need for mature believers. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So when I'm looking at these things, I'm thinking about the Word of God. I'm walking through this process. We know Habakkuk. Chapter 1, verse 5, when it talks about God would do a thing in our days that we wouldn't believe that we're told to us. I think that's coming. I believe we're coming into the time where I began to see a number of things that have to do with a collision of technologies. A collision of technologies. There's a suppression happening of anointed things that God wants to bring forth to sustain a nation, to sustain people, to bring you to a point that you can function without governmental overreach and dictatorship. And there's going to be technologies that get released that we've got to pray through, and I believe they're going to get revealed. And these technologies will be to stop people being put into a digital prison. More than just sustainable energy, I'm talking about supernatural nearly energy that begins to allow people to do things and allow things to happen. There's something going on with this. You know, we recognize one of the reasons they went after the area in North Carolina is because of what's under the ground. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right. But listen to me. The counterfeit always comes before the real. Yeah, yes, yeah. Say that. Yeah. And in 2016, I, I knew some things about what was going to happen with the election based on what the Lord told me about my friend. Then in 2020, the Lord told me clearly, he will not win. We went live. I'll tell you what, Larry, people stayed away from me by the thousands. <laughs> Prophesied that one. That, Pastor Rick, that was a real hit. Praise God. People are like, you need to get with the program. Everybody is saying this. And look, I love the prophets. I love them all. Pray for them. Know them. But I'll tell you what, people were saying things, and the Spirit of the Lord would not allow me to say that. Every time I'd go to say it, I kept hearing, he's going to lose by technology. And I think if all things were equal, we know what really happened. Thievery happened. But if we really begin to recognize it, he lost by a technology. The Lord showed me that several months in advance. He showed me Trump's face and Kamala's face in a vision in 2020, her face got strong and his face got weak and went away in the vision. And I believe, oh, help us, Jesus. I believe that was because she was becoming VP and he was losing that time. I pray that's not a do-over in Jesus' name. So here's what's going on. God is going to save the day. But he's going to do it through his people. He's going to do it in a way that begins to bring great change and great energy and great strength to the people of God. And I want to say a few things to us here this evening. I sense so powerfully that here's what's going to happen. I was, I was praying before I came here. I began to seek the face of God like, Lord, what are you saying? And the Lord is saying the people of God must begin to use their weaponry now. And they have to use joy as their strength. We realize Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, it says, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. That's after they had rebuilt the wall to the, to the city, right? They rebuilt the wall to Jerusalem. They did these things. And then Ezra, the young kid, Ezra prophet, young kid, scribe, gets up and he begins to open up the Bible, 
open up the law and reads it and people begin to cry out loud. And then it came down to the joy of the Lord will be our strength. There's a sustaining anointing that must come on the people of God at this time. And it is the joy of the Lord that will be your strength. And joy is a spiritual weapon. It's not based on happiness. It's not based on how you feel. It's not based on if somebody said something nice to you. It's not based on situational moments. It is based on a supernatural connection to the truth of the living God as you're standing in a present evil age. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. It is the will of God that you be delivered from this present evil age. Galatians 1, 4 says that. Jesus came. He came that he could bring about life and deliver us from this present evil age. Then it goes on to say, and that is the will of God. You see that? According to the will of our God and Father. When you look at that, if somebody ever asks you, what's the will of God? You can say to them, without that fatalist point of view, you can say to them, it is the will of God that I be delivered from this mess. You got to hear me here. And a lot of people get into, well, you know, God's in control. God's going to do whatever he wants. If God's in control of every little thing that's happening, this place sure is a mess. I don't mean to kick that holy cow. I'm actually just trying to push it over and then cook it. Look, I believe in the sovereignty of God. I just think it's been misidentified and wrongly interpreted. God is sovereign. He's awesome. He's in charge. He's the supreme being. He's the almighty God of heaven and earth, the Lord of the universe. He is the king of the ages. But listen to me. When we get into this understanding about God's in control, it creates a passivity that we think we don't need to get involved. But it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, as he is, so are we in this world. The we part is the commission, the great commission. But a lot of the church today is preaching it like it's the great mission. God's in control. He's going to do it all. If God's in control and he's going to do it all, we ought not be here. But here's what you recognize. When you get into an understanding that God is the great God, Jehovah, and he wants you to win even more than you do, but he needs your cooperation. He needs you to come to him. He needs to work through you because greater is he that is in you than he, the Antichrist and the Antichrist spirit that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the church, the ecclesia, will not be overcome by the gates of hell or he that is in the world. When you pull back from he that is in the world and go hide, he that is in the world begins to run the show. I saw a number of things that began to happen. And what I saw earlier is I saw this scenario that was dealing with, with this area here. Then, of course, we just saw this, the storms. I believe what the enemy meant for evil here, God, and this is, of course, Florida. I believe what the enemy meant for evil here, God is going to cause revival in this area. Revival is going to come out of this area. I believe there's other coastal things that are going to begin to happen. I saw something tremendous, and I, I don't know how to say this, and sometimes I have these do-over words, but I saw this, I sent this, uh, I drew this out in the spirit as I was praying, I sent it to uh, Bishop Allen, and uh, we were talking, he's like, man, that's, that's crazy. But I saw something, and I saw darkness going into this time frame, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw more for us here, but I saw darkness going like, like this, into this time. I saw darkness uh, just projecting forward. Okay, I saw darkness, and this represents dark. And then I saw this word. It's like darkness was going to get a runaway moment. And then I saw something happening by the Spirit of the Lord that went like this. It came down, and I saw it just coming down like this with a tremendous force. And this force just began to cut off the force of darkness. And when I saw this, I realized there would be a collision over it. And I saw this being the word intervention. And then I saw the words kick the hive in 25. I began to see um, the last stand. I saw them shouting World War III. 
shouting and chanting it, chanting it and chanting it. And then as they shouted, World War III, World War III, World War III, these things are coming. Then I began to see this moment break onto the scene where they were saying, World War III, it's coming, it's going to happen, this is going to be inevitable, these things are going to take place. And I saw it go into the fall time, up to the first of the year, that I saw quarter one, quarter two, and I saw the word intervention come down. And I believe the Lord is saying, many will say it's the last stand, it's World War III. Ladies and gentlemen, we are already in World War III. It's a different kind of warfare. It's weaponized weather warfare. The next thing I see coming, and you're going to hear this watchword, you're going to hear solar flares, you're going to hear solar activity, and they're going to say, "Uh uh-oh, look out, here come the shortages, here come the power outages, here come the things, conveniently, right on time. They're going to do that. I'm telling you, I've seen it for two years, and it hasn't manifested to the way I've seen it yet. It's coming. When it comes, rejoice, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I know in my spirit, no matter what they throw at us, we're going to ride it out. And we're going to stand, see another day, and we will see victory. And I think it was June, I think it was June 17th. I was in a meeting. I was in Montana preaching and prophesying. Or maybe I was in Minneapolis. I was in Minneapolis preaching and prophesying. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, the shot will be heard around the world. Then I was on July 13th, the very morning that uh, was eight hours before he got shot in the ear. And I heard the words, the shot will be heard around the world and Paul Revere's will go out. Eight hours later, he got shot in the ear right after our live broadcast. And I believe the Lord is saying right now, what happened in 2016 was supernatural. And then in 2020, I saw that he would not win. The Lord showed me that. This year, I've been asking the Lord, what's going to happen? The Lord said, I have put it in the hands of the church. What will the ecclesia do? What will they do? And the Lord is bringing a great way of breakthrough and escape, and I see this happening. I've been praying for uh, Alaska. I've been praying for whatever they would try to do here by way of water. I've been praying against ships on the sea. I've been praying against a lot of things that I've been seeing coming to the nation. Look, the whole world doesn't revolve around America, but the season we're in right now does. If BRICS has their way, which they're trying to do at the end of this month, they're going to try to get rid of the U.S. dollar. But you know what the Lord told me, Pastor Larry? The Lord told me no matter what comes next, he said these words, the Berlin Wall still fell. Right, right. No matter what. I said, Lord, what are we going to do with the economy? These clowns have run us straight off a cliff. We're doing like 200 miles an hour and we flew off the cliff. We're airborne right now. What's going to happen? I said, Lord, is there a miracle? Is there a turnaround? And he said very clearly to me, He's actually said two things now. He said, oil will answer the economy. He told me. Autonomous, localized oil. And then secondly, I heard this from the Spirit of the Lord. I did, I was praying. And then he said, hidden technologies. We got those two things in the land. I believe God has a plan that he will unveil and he will surprise and he'll push things through. Now, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Coming to revival meetings, I just start sharing stuff, you know. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. I saw this at the beginning of the year. That's what I saw at the beginning of the year. I wrote it on the whiteboard. This is January. This is July. I saw a river running through the year like that. And as the river came through the year, I saw the words new characters. I saw all these things happening. Didn't realize that this is about the time that the assassination attempt happened, the first one. The second one, the Lord showed me he'd have three hurdles to make getting into this time. And then what they're going to try to do is bring this red October where we are right now or a dark November. But the Lord said, pray for rain. And I believe we can see the goodness of the Lord. We get through this time. And this, if he gets in, if uh, this 90-day period from here or November all the way up to January when they do this. And you know they got their plan for that same date. 
Hear me. There's a plan around the same date. The J6 date. But we go into the coming year, I think the word we're going to hear all the time is money. Economics, money, 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 and it'll go into the coming year. I believe we get in. I believe we can stay off some things. I think we can stay off the apocalypse, and I think that we have a chance of a longevity here that we can keep moving forward with. But it is going to be very costly, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. And a lot of people are saying, no, no, no. It's going to be great. Business as usual. I'm telling you, this fight is coming to our steps. But you know what I also know? That even on a bad day, we're anointed to be the best there is. So prepare for them to pull out all the stops. And here's what I mean by this is that we are at the one yard line. We're about to start seeing a number of things that will try to bring a uh, offset of the way the spirit of the Lord has brought so many advancements forward. You're going to see more revealing, more understanding, more victory for many people in the process that we're walking through all the way up to not only this cycle where we're picking our leaders, but so much more that's going to manifest in a global international way. Now, here's what I want to say. Now, first of all, let me tell everybody, I'm not driving. Uh, just so everybody knows that I'm in the passenger side of this. Uh, Ilya is driving, Elijah's driving. And then of course I've got, um, uh, Heather's back here getting ready. We're taking a, a journey where I was doing this uh, because you guys send us and we're so grateful to you. But listen, I, I hear something powerful in the spirit of the Lord right now that God is saying clearly to everybody who has ears to hear it, that we are coming into a, a crucial moment, both as a nation and many nations coming together as the body of Christ. We're coming into a time where the Lord wants to bring revelatory insight to see us to the other side of this valley. And what do I mean by the valley? I believe very clearly that we're seeing wickedness and light uh, j just coming into a collision here that, that we've not seen in a generation. And in that is coming an exposure. And through exposure is going to be more and more of this unprecedented narrative. So. Here's what I see. I see this, this one yard line scenario. We're getting to the one yard line. We're getting down to it. And people are saying, what's going to happen? And again, again, I'm telling you by the spirit of the Lord, here is what the, the narrative is. It is in the hands of the church. Now I got to tell you when Jonathan Kahn stood up on, you know, with Jenny Donnelly and many of the leaders on the national mall and broke that altar of Ishtar, there was a supernatural release into the atmosphere over this nation. Something shook loose that the darkness did not expect. And we're going into unparalleled, unprecedented waters here that I think is gonna to begin to open up a fresh revelation and an opportunity to seize the day of not only this nation, but of the future for our children. So I sense clearly they're gonna bring surprise assaults now, surprise uh, issues, surprise things where they'll begin to say, uh, you know, They'll, they'll begin to spring things. That's what I'm trying to say. They're going to spring things. But I keep hearing these words. It's going to be a cry of WW3. They're going to cry out about that. They're going to cry out about more and more issues. They're going to try to cause more and more disasters. There is going to be a narrative where they try and manufacture some torp, some some type of, um, um, I'll say it this way. They want to shoplift. They want to shoplift the choice for our leaders in November and you can already see it you see rulings happening uh, in Georgia where they're saying oh we really don't want to hand count uh, the the ballots we don't want to do that we don't want to go down that Avenue because we want to just have people trusting the system that's already in place so you're already seeing moves made by these bought and paid for judges in all of these circumstances. But I sense the spirit of the Lord saying, I will cause a victory by many or by few. If the church will continue to rise much like it did 
in D.C., much like it's doing right now around the nation. I see an uprising coming. There are people that are so angry at the response that happened, even with the hurricane that hit in North Carolina. And you're seeing the Spirit of the Lord rise up with people with a holy indignation, saying we are not going to put up with the same type of narrative that many people have forced us to put up with. I see the Spirit of the Lord bringing great victory to you and your children. Now, I, I'm telling you, we need to pray for protection because there's been a supernatural advancement and a, a cloak of protection over um, 45 and over so many of these people that have, have risen up against this institutional madness. Now, I, I believe very clearly, I really do, I believe clearly by the Spirit of the Lord, we're coming to the one yard line. And it's not just about a man, it's not just about a circumstance, it's not just about what's happening, but I sense clearly that the wickedness and darkness is gonna get frantic like an animal in the corner. And when you corner an animal, it comes out without ration, rationality, it comes out without clarity, it just begins to lash out and pull every string and push every button it can. And this is where we're going. And let me say this to you as well. The Spirit of the Lord is saying he will confound the wisdom of the wise. I hear this right now in my spirit. Listen to me. Pray for me as I say this and I share this. The Spirit of the Lord is going to confound the wisdom of the wise. He's going to begin to make foolishness out of wisdom. From the wisdom of the world will be turned to foolishness in many arenas. And the things that they thought would work and the frustration that the Lord will continue to bring as these wicked plans continue to unravel and fail, the Lord's going to make a way. Now, I'm telling you, there, there is going to be a wild, unparalleled scenario that begins to unfold going right up, right up to the one yard light and when we pick our leaders. And it's going to be a mess before, after, and there's going to be narratives and people are going to shout from every side of this scenario. But the Lord is saying clearly that he is making a way through the Red Sea through the Red Sea. It's not going to look as some has said. It's not going to unfold as some have promised. It's not going to go the way that many people have surmised or commentated on or opined about or brought out all kinds of ideology that says this is how it shall be. When the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I am doing a thing that will shock this generation. It will be through much difficulty, much issue, much overcoming and much perseverance. But there will be strength at the end of the day if we do not faint in the process and the process will require strength. It will require relentless continuation of the Spirit of the Lord by His people to continue to go forward when others will not. The Lord is saying the darkness, I hear this in my spirit, the darkness has been organized, but I am unraveling their organizational structure. I am unraveling their very plans that have worked for them in the past. And I'm telling you, the old playbook will not work in this time. Their old playbook will not work in this time. Rather, there will be a rising and a shining in the middle of a dark and present evil where the Lord says, I will raise you up like a flaming torch among the sheaves and many will see and many will fear and many will put their trust in the name of the Lord, their God. And in that, Psalm 34 says, evil will slay the wicked, but it will not come near the righteous. For the Lord your God, who is a sun and shield, he bestows favor and honor, and no good thing will he withhold from you who walk uprightly before him. So yes, be ready for the shaking. Yes, be ready for dim lights. Yes, be ready for difficulty and power outages. When they shout solar flares, and they begin to go down these narratives of saying, oh, the biggest solar storm of our time is coming. The biggest uh, storm and flares from the sun, unprecedented. We've never seen anything like it. When those words begin to come across the news cycle, Pay very close attention because the Lord is saying, I'm about to do a thing on the back end of that that will be greater than what people have imagined. There's many aspects to this that go well beyond a cycle where we pick our leaders. There's more to this that the Spirit of the Lord is raising up in a generation and with clarity for our sons and daughters to live. I hear a suspension of time. I hear an intervention. And the word of the Lord for quarter one, quarter two coming into the following year is intervention. Intervention. Now, I don't know what's going on in the news and all this, but I got to tell you, as I'm praying, I'm seeing things that are taking place in the sea. I'm seeing seabaring vessels doing war play and warfare activity, things trying to rise, trying to rise, trying to rise. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I will still intervene. And the Lord is saying very clearly, I hear this in my spirit right now. Do you not think I cannot do a financial economic miracle if you will only believe? 
I will do an economic miracle for you and your children's children and a generation if you only believe. The Spirit of the Lord is saying so clearly to many people in the body of Christ, lay down your arrows going against one another and begin to call on my name. Do not, do not criticize or attack other believers at this time. Should never do it. But I'm saying to you, people that have fallen, things that are going on, yes, we need victims to have their voice. That is important. That's so vital. But here's what I want to say to you. It is important we don't give into the spirit of division, the spirit of criticism, the spirit of assaulting and attacking one another in the body of Christ. We must unite, not fight, because if it's too small, that's when men fight. If it's big enough and things are big right now, and we need to unite. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying very clearly to you, there is a time of awakening that is here. And in this time of awakening, he's going to bring an unprecedented empowerment to those that have ears to hear. Do not fear what they fear. Do not shrink back. Do not fall to the wayside. The Lord is saying clearly to you, I will make a way in the middle of this present evil and you and your children's children shall live. You will know there is a God in Israel and there is a God in America and there's a God in every nation that fears the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord. This strong tower anointing is now coming. Now listen to me, I have things I'm praying about, I'm seeing. I believe that there is a supernatural favor that the Lord has brought to those who've been praying and he's bringing it to those who are standing closer to his side of things with the Bible narrative than other sides. And there's a lot of idiotic stuff going on out there where people are, have narratives, they're saying do this, don't do that, listen to me. We need to get the right man in place. And there is strength coming for you. Now we're on assignment. I, I got to say something to you guys. Heather and I are out on assignment. We're, we're, we got another several days of just ministering and traveling and uh, special meetings. We're on assignment. We go meet people. We're, we're going to Daystar. We're going to be doing two days with uh, Joni and Doug. It's going to be amazing. Uh, we love being with our Daystar family. We're going to be going... Uh, to a number of events and scenarios, uh, churches, but also a lot of private meetings. And I, I just gotta tell you, we need your prayer right now because the Lord is calling us to do something mighty at this time. I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is making a great way of access and a great way of breakthrough. And I'm believing for every partner and every person that's praying for us to continue praying because there is an anointing where God is bringing strategic alignment to many people. And the strategic alignment that he's bringing is this unification of the red church, meaning the blood-bought believers that know who God's called them to be. Now hear me. The Lord's going to make a way for you. He's going to make a way for your children, and he's going to make a way for this nation. And in that, there's going to be a lot of pressing through, a lot of hanging on. And regardless of the outcome, We need to get after it. Now, people are asking about early, uh, if they can make their choice early uh, for this cycle where we pick our leaders. Yes, do it immediately if you can. And you know what to do. Vote for the good guys. But let me just say something clearly. The Lord God Almighty can save by many or by few. And we're getting down to the one yard line. So you gotta stay encouraged. If you've been feeling fatigued, if you've been feeling an unnatural sense of weariness and being tired, if you feel tired and fatigued, you're probably experiencing what the nation's experiencing, what the Spirit of the Lord is trying to bring things through and break you out of. There's a supernatural thing that's going against so many good folks right now, and it's a weariness. Do not grow weary in well-doing. That means you got to be a little mental, mentally tough right now. you got to lean in by faith. you got to continue going to the Word of God. you got to continue to rise and shine in the midst of a present evil age. God is making a way for you. Now, we're going out on assignment. We need your help. Please, partners, if you are standing with us, I want to thank you. If you've been a partner with us for a long time, thank you. If you want to join the partner family, avoid all the scams out there, go to josephz.com. The thing about our partners is, is we will call you when you partner here. We will call you, we will stand with you, and you'll hear from our team personally. We will call you, and, um, and it'll be a monumental deal. We love calling our partners, and we pray with you. We love you so much. Jesus is Lord. 
Jesus is Lord. I break anxiety off you. I break fatigue off you. I break the crisis fatigue off you in the name of Jesus. Greater is he that is in you than he, that spirit of antichrist, than he that is in the world. I really hope you'll partner with us. And if you are a partner, thank you. But if you partner with us, you're going to hear from us. We're going to call you regularly. JosephZ.com. That's the only way you do it. JosephZ.com or this text to give number on the screen. But if you do that, you're going to hear from us because we want to unite and stand together. Jesus is Lord and Jesus is coming soon. I love you. Please repost this, share this everywhere you can. I'll be live again. Be praying for us as we're out on assignment. I'll be sharing more prophetic insights. I sense so many things that God, uh, people ask how much does it cost to be a partner? Whatever means something to you. That's all it is. We don't put a dollar amount on what you value. So whatever means something to you, that's how much you partner for. JosephZ.com. Thank you so much. We love you. We'll be talking soon. Pray for us. You're sending us right now, partners. We got a lot to do. I love y'all. Talk to you soon. I'm standing here in front of the White House, and in 2020, I had a prophetic word that came to me that the White House was meant to be a lighthouse. A lighthouse meaning its purpose for all nations, its purpose for America, and who resides in it really is the telling point of what's going to happen. So as you know, we're coming into the season where we pick our leaders. We're getting very close now, and I'm standing here in Jesus' name to say, Lord, we plead the blood of the Lamb over the White House. We begin to come into agreement with your word, and I believe that God is raising up a great future for this nation. And he's saying to you right now, please come into agreement. Please agree with the word of the Lord over this land. I believe God is asking you to pray and to stand to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It is my conviction we have one more round coming regardless of what happens next. And I believe if we stand and we walk towards this outcome in faith and favor, we are gonna see righteousness prevail. So here I am in front of the White House that is meant to be a lighthouse. And I declare it right now in Jesus' name, be a lighthouse, be a place for all nations to look at and say, my goodness, there's something right about that land. God, I ask you for one more round, one more time. Lord, one more time, mercy to this place. In Jesus' name, we ask that it's filled with the peace of God and the right people at this time. In Jesus' name, I lift up the White House of the United States, and I ask you, God, to put the right person in there. We come into agreement with the right leader, the right voice to occupy and inhabit this area. My sense is that God's gonna do something we would not believe, though it were told to us in this generation. Agree with me right now for the United States of America. Lord, we lift up America. We lift up the White House. We lift up this nation. And we ask you, Lord, not for how good the nation is, not for how great of people there are. I ask you, Lord, for the sake of Jesus and the church that resides in this land, that you would again give us mercy and again move upon the land. We authorize you, Lord, to do so according to your word. In Jesus' name, let the White House become a lighthouse. Amen. Well, I'm standing here outside our World Broadcast Center. Now, with the World Broadcast Center, we have a little bit extra land that's on it. Not much, but just enough that if we wanted to add on, we could. I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment, but right now I wanna thank so many of you who've participated in making this building what it is. Now, we're getting to the point, we're going to take a major lunge forward by faith and by really good planning. And that has to do with television and advanced media. Now we're already taking dramatic steps. One very exciting thing that's happening is the Sid Roth Network has reached out to us and they're having us air our live broadcasts every day simultaneously with their television network. A simpler way of saying it is, when we go live in the morning, they will air that live on their TV network. And I gotta tell you, it is amazing what the Lord's doing to open doors for us 
and our partners to reach more and more viewers and people all around the world. But to really accomplish this, we've got to develop a call center, a call center that's going to really help you and your family. We want to minister to you more. We want to be able to be present for you in a greater capacity. The way we want to move forward is with a new call center. And I'm talking high touch that beats high tech every time. What does that mean? It means when you call in that you get somebody. We're here for you in real time during our live broadcast. And we have a place that will reach out and minister to you, our partners. And we just want to be here for you. If you're a viewer, a partner, we want to be available. And we have to make a place or more room for the production of our materials, meaning shipping out books to you and teachings and so much more that we are just getting into right now. And that means we have to finish this building. And to do that, we need your help. We need your help through your donations, your time, anything that you can do. By time, I mean prayer. In any way that you can spend your efforts through prayer and faith with us, we so appreciate it. But more than anything else, we're looking for partners that will help us finish this building. And if you have any interest in really sewing into this today and standing with us over the World Broadcast Center, the total cost that we have left to knock this out, to get done with phase one, we're calling it phase one because it's the studios, the building payment to pay it off in full, and in addition to that, to remodel everything inside is 1.2 million. And we're looking to knock that out this year. We need your help. We want to see this advance and we're thrilled about it. And I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who've helped with this so far. You've sown, you've stood with us, but we have a little bit more to go. And I'd encourage you to do so today by going to josephz.com and helping us finish up this project so we can move forward and better serve you and the body of Christ. We're so grateful. Remember, it's a million for a billion. And here we are at the World Broadcast Center, and I believe that we together can get this done very quickly. I love you, I bless you, and thank you for your support. I wanna tell you about an amazing opportunity that has just been presented to us. We've had a supernatural door of opportunity open for us. Only God could do what is happening for this ministry right now. And it is involving television, network television, satellite television going all over the world. Now, there's a lot in store for this, but let me explain. This is a word God's given us to reach a billion people for the gospel. And I feel an urgency for this coming year to advance and go forward because of the uniqueness of what God has spoken in this ministry and through this ministry in media. And here's what we have to do. To accomplish this, we not only have to buy the airtime, but we have to build out a call center and finish this building. And we are in the middle of it right now, but the timeline has just been sped up to fall time so we can be ready for the first of the year when we're gonna to begin to launch out in television in a monumental way. Now we've had an opportunity that is both fiscally responsible and financially amazing the way God has done this for us. And we have to take opportunity right now with it because it won't last long. So here's what I'm asking you. Would you consider supporting us helping us build out the call center, helping us finish off this building, and helping us with the budget of airtime. And it is gonna be a monumental thing, and the Lord has given us favor, and I can't wait to tell you more and more about it. But if you would consider partnering today over this, I know we can hit this target, I know we can walk through the door, and I know we can raise up a million to go win a billion. And I'm telling you, this is a God moment. It's a now word. And I'm asking you if you consider partnering with us over it. Maybe you want to become a partner, or if you are a partner, maybe you'd consider increasing your partnership today or giving a one-time offering. This is an amazing open door for this ministry and this broadcast. Everything we've prayed about, everything the Lord has told us to do is now coming to this monumental moment. Next year, we're going to reach the masses like never before, but we need your help. Please consider going to josephz.com right now and supporting this amazing open door. Thank you so very much. Well, we wanna invite you to this year's annual conference. You know, we had a great time last year. We did such a great conference together last year. Right? We had a blast. Oh, it was awesome. Power of God, prophecy, teaching, apostles, and prophets. It was awesome. 
Well, people were touched and we got a lot of inquiries. We did. Will you do this again? Yes. So we decided we're going to do this annual conference yes. again. Yes, and I'm quite excited about this one and we want you to join us. It's going to be really powerful when we're hands on people. Oh, we are. It's going to be intense ministry and we want you to do everything you can to get there. We hope to see you there because we know God's going to touch you. It's a now word. And with the days we're facing, you're going to need this empowerment and you're going to have hope and faith to go forward. We hope that you'll join us. And what's the name of the conference? Voice of God. Voice of God. That's what we need. God is always speaking. He's looking for whoever has ears to hear. So if you have ears to hear, you need to come join us. We hope to see you there.